That's a confidential informant. They'll let you do crimes as long as you don't do no murders and stuff like that. So Diddy has finally spoken out after being accused of snitching and he is not having any of it. Puff was a millionaire. Him being a confidential informant, him getting money like that, it was favors. He been getting favors and been paying law enforcement. Did a raid of two of the rappers' multi-million dollar mansions on March 25th. The star reacts in a statement to E! News. An attorney for Diddy says, quote, Yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force. This is especially telling considering nobody expects him to survive prison if he does snitch. Suge Knight claims Diddy's life is in danger, urges Diddy to turn himself in. Sug Knight, the mastermind behind Death Row Records, is stirring things up even from behind bars. He's been speaking out about the recent raids on the homes of none other than Sean Diddy Combs, his former rival turned fellow mogul. Can you make this go away for me? I'll give you this and that. Now, that could be a lot of speculations or whatever like that. Knight, dropping his wisdom on the Collect Call podcast, didn't hold back. He dropped a warning bomb for Diddy, suggesting his life might be in jeopardy because, you guessed it, he's privy to all the secrets. Quite the intense statement, right? But let's backtrack a bit. This podcast isn't your typical run-of-the-mill show. It's actually a compilation of raw, unfiltered conversations, featuring Knight chatting up with Dave Mays and others who accept his collect calls from the clink. Now, you might be wondering why Knight's locked up in the first place. Well, he's serving a hefty 28-year sentence for voluntary manslaughter in the 2015 killing of Terry Carter. Serious stuff. But back to the recent drama. Knight didn't just dish out ominous warnings. He also showed some compassion, expressing concern for Diddy's family, especially his kids. It's a tough situation for everyone involved. Speaking of Diddy's offspring, two of his sons, Justin and Christian King Combs, found themselves in a bit of a bind during the raid. They were briefly detained at their dad's swanky L.A. pad in Holmby Hills. Yikes. The day after the raid, Diddy's lawyer didn't mince words, calling out the authorities for their heavy-handed tactics. The legal team emphasized Diddy's innocence and vowed to fight tooth and nail to clear his name. Knight chimed in too, lamenting the whole ordeal's impact on the hip-hop community and black culture at large. He's definitely not cheering about it. Now, about those investigations, there's been some back and forth. Knight's ex-account supposedly responded, but he claims he's been hacked. He's redirecting fans to his Instagram, where his son keeps everyone updated. Meanwhile, Diddy's been laying low, letting his legal team do the talking. But hey, he did share some adorable Easter Sunday pics of his youngest daughter, Love Sean. It seems that the ramifications of what's been termed the curse of Combs are now materializing for Sean Diddy Combs. The once skyrocketing success of his two record labels has come to a grinding halt amidst a tumultuous series of events involving violence, death, and legal entanglements. Beginning as an intern at Uptown Records in 1990, under CEO Andre Harrell's mentorship, Diddy's journey from a backup dancer to a prominent figure in hip hop commenced. His partnership with Harrell saw the emergence of several young artists, with the label gaining momentum with each successful release. However, the collaborative spirit eventually soured due to business and creative disputes, leading Diddy to venture out and establish his own label, Bad Boy Records. Under the Bad Boy banner, Diddy played a pivotal role in shaping the careers of burgeoning stars such as Mary J. Blige and Jodeci. Despite initial triumphs, the shadow of controversy has loomed large over Combs and his ventures, culminating in federal law enforcement raids on his properties. Tragically, the notable figures central to the inception of Uptown Records, Andre Harrell, Kim Porter, and Dwight Myers, widely known as Heavy D, all met untimely ends. Dwight Myers, professionally known as Heavy D, tragically passed away at the age of 44 in 2011 due to a pulmonary embolism stemming from a blood clot in his leg. Kim Porter, who shared three children with Diddy, succumbed at age 47 in 2018 to pneumonia following flu-like symptoms. 
Andre Harrell, the visionary behind Uptown Records, passed away in 2020 at the age of 59 due to heart failure. In addition to these losses, other significant figures associated with Uptown Records and Bad Boy Records faced health struggles and legal troubles. Al B. Sure, another early pillar of Uptown Records, experienced renal failure in 2022 but eventually recovered after falling into a coma for two months. Several artists signed under the Bad Boy label, including Christopher Wallace, Notorious B.I.G., Craig Mack, and Black Rob, passed away due to various health issues. Despite these challenges, Diddy's legal team has vehemently defended him against recent accusations, denouncing them as unfounded and asserting his innocence. Natanya Rubin, one of the individuals injured in the infamous Club New York shooting involving Sean Diddy Combs, Jennifer Lopez, and rapper Shine Barrow, is determined to pursue justice by reopening the case. Rubin, now 53 years old, revealed her willingness to undergo a procedure to remove bullet fragments from her face, intending to provide crucial ballistics evidence. Speaking to guest host Brian Enton on News Nation's Elizabeth Vargas reports. Friday, Rubin expressed her readiness to potentially risk her life for the cause. In the 1999 incident, Rubin was one of three individuals wounded. Despite Barrow admitting to firing a gun that night, Rubin has steadfastly maintained that Combs was the one who shot her. She contends that Barrow unjustly bore the blame for Combs' actions. Rubin still carries nine bullet fragments in her face from the incident, which occurred during the early hours of December 27, 1999, at the now-closed Club New York near Times Square. The shooting transpired amid a confrontation between Combs, then known as Puffy, and his entourage, and a Brooklyn drug dealer named Matthew Scar Allen. Barrow, then 21 and associated with Combs Group, was apprehended by police while attempting to flee the club with a firearm. Following the Club New York shooting incident, both Diddy and Jennifer Lopez attempted to leave the scene in a Lincoln Navigator, but were apprehended by law enforcement on 8th Avenue and subsequently arrested. Lopez was released after a 14-hour detention and was not charged in connection with the case. In the subsequent trial in 2001, Shine Barrow was sentenced to 10 years in prison. However, Diddy and his bodyguard, Anthony Jones, were acquitted of weapons charges. Natanya Rubin, a mother of three, has consistently maintained her version of events. Testifying during the trial, Rubin recounted seeing Mr. Combs brandish a black gun with his right hand, an action she likened to being struck by a flaming hot sledgehammer. Despite challenges to her account, Rubin remains steadfast, emphasizing her first-hand experience and clear observation of the events that unfolded. It, Rubin expressed her understanding of skepticism surrounding her accusation, but asserted her credibility as the survivor who directly witnessed the incident. Despite her resolve, Rubin admitted to fearing for her safety, acknowledging the potential risks associated with her outspokenness. She emphasized the need for thorough investigation should anything untoward happen to her, given her otherwise low-risk lifestyle. Misa Hilton, known as the mother of Justin Combs and a former flame of Sean Diddy Combs, didn't hold back when she took to Instagram to voice her concerns about the recent law enforcement raid on the music mogul's Los Angeles mansion. In a fiery video and statement posted on Tuesday, she didn't mince words, slamming the militarized force used during the operation. The overzealous and overtly militarized force used against my sons Justin and Christian is deplorable, Hilton wrote passionately. If these were the sons of a non-black celebrity, they would not have been handled with the same aggression. The attempt to humiliate and terrorize these innocent young black men is despicable. Confirmed by U.S. officials on March 25th, Sean Combs' properties in Los Angeles and Miami were raided as part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Hilton's video, capturing the tense moments of the raid, showcased armored vehicles and heavily armed officers descending upon the residents. Enough is enough, Hilton exclaimed. Did Justin need several laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest? Did Christian need a gun pointed at the back of his head while he was handcuffed? How many times have we seen young, unarmed black men not make it out of these types of situations alive? Promising to fight for justice, Hilton asserted that her son's attorney is scrutinizing the use of force by law enforcement. We will fight for justice, utilizing every imaginable resource. I'm not with the propaganda, she declared defiantly. 
Responding to the raids, Sean Combs' legal representative, Aaron Dyer, labeled the operation a gross overuse of military-level force and denounced the hostility exhibited by authorities towards Combs' family and employees. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities, Dyer clarified in a statement released a day after the raids. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. Dyer continued, emphasizing Combs' innocence amidst what he characterized as a witch hunt fueled by baseless accusations. This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. The impact of Kim Porter's passing in 2018 reverberated deeply within Sean Diddy Combs, according to an exclusive source speaking to Us Weekly. When Kim died, it rocked Diddy's world, the insider reveals in the latest issue of Us. It was a massive shock and a turning point. All the other women in his life were playthings. Kim was the real deal. It was all down from there. Their relationship, marked by on-again, off-again phases from 1994 to 2007, bore three children, son King, 26, and twin daughters Delilah and Jesse, 17. Additionally, Diddy adopted Porter's son from a previous relationship, Quincy, 32. Following Porter's demise from low bar pneumonia at age 47, Diddy publicly grieved on Instagram. For the last three days, I've been trying to wake up out of this nightmare, but I haven't, Diddy wrote at the time. I don't know what I'm going to do without you, baby. I miss you so much. Today, I'm going to pay tribute to you. I'm going to try and find the words to explain our unexplainable relationship. We were more than best friends. We were more than soulmates. We were some other's tea and I miss you so much. Super black love. I'm very surprised at how ugly and dark this is, the insider comments on recent allegations. We were close. Something has gone very wrong. This isn't what he used to be about. Kim Porter, an American model and actress known for her roles in films and TV shows such as The Brothers and Single Ladies, shared a long and tumultuous relationship with the rapper and producer. She succumbed to low bar pneumonia at 47, following days of flu-like symptoms, Despite their lengthy companionship, Diddy never wed Porter, a fact he expressed regret over after her passing. He admitted to playing himself by not marrying her and shared that one of her last requests was for him to care for their children. Describing their bond as unexplainable and some other S.E., Diddy's sentiments underscored the profound connection they shared. While fans admired their co-parenting dynamics and blended family, Questions lingered about Diddy's reluctance to propose. Some speculated it stemmed from fear of commitment or his hectic career and romantic pursuits. Allegations of physical and emotional abuse from his former bodyguard, Gene Deal, added complexity to their narrative, tarnishing their legacy as a couple. Al B. Sure. Dropped a bombshell during the Equal Justice Now Awards in Los Angeles, leaving the audience hanging on his every word. In a clip snagged by TMZ, the singer, also known as Albert Joseph Brown III, teased the crowd about his forthcoming life story. We're going to be producing the Al B. Sure life story, he announced, setting the room abuzz. So hold on to your britches, and you'll really understand how I ended up in a coma. Sure's enigmatic hint didn't stop there. With a smirk, he threw in a curious reference to Homeland Security, teasing, you're really gonna need to call Homeland Security. Fans couldn't help but connect the dots. Given Combs' recent run-in with the feds, having his homes raided by Homeland Security, Schur's comment fueled speculation about the rap mogul's involvement in his health crisis. But a source close to the situation quickly squashed any notion of foul play. The insinuation that Diddy put Al in hospital is crazy and fake news, they told Page Six. Anyone who thinks Al was a great dad should be asking where he's been the last three decades. Sure, who was hospitalized in July 2022 and lingered in a coma for over two months, emerged with a new lease on life in October of that year. Offering a rare glimpse into his near-death ordeal, he recounted his time intubated and on a ventilator with a tracheotomy to Fox, New York. But there's more to the story. 
Sure, the recipient of a life-saving liver transplant hinted at deeper revelations to come. The entire situation is unfortunate. I don't speak about another man's business, he shared with TMZ. All I know is that I'm working on the life story and the way I got to be in a coma, stay tuned. As the mystery surrounding his coma continues to unravel, fans eagerly await the full story behind Shure's harrowing journey and its possible ties to the enigmatic world of Sean Diddy Combs. R. Kelly isn't buying into the swirl of sex trafficking allegations surrounding Diddy. In a candid conversation with WAC 100, the embattled singer weighed in on the recent raids on Diddy's properties by Homeland Security. Drawing on a Biggie reference, Kelly suggested that federal agents might be targeting Diddy because of his high profile, echoing the sentiment that they're mad because he's flagrant. Despite his skepticism, Kelly urged both Diddy and the public to take the investigation seriously, cautioning that no celebrity is immune to being hunted down, even if the accusations are unfounded. The shot is crazy. They're laughing and making comedian jokes and doing all the other shot on the radio and everything else, but they it could be next. Kelly cautioned. That's what's so f***ed up about it. They so stupid they don't even realize the moves that's going on. I don't believe none of this shot. You could tell me about Puffy, you tell me could about anybody. You could tell me on the news, the weather, the sky is blue, I'm not gonna believe the shit, cause I'm in it now and I know what they did. Despite Kelly's disbelief, another accusation surfaced amidst the chaos surrounding Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami. Tanika Ray, a former dancer for Combs, vaguely recounted a horrific encounter with the mogul. Reposting a clip of journalist Toure discussing his relative's unsettling experience with Diddy, Ray hinted at her own troubling interaction, though she stopped short of revealing details. She stressed that only five people know the full story and hinted at the possibility of sharing it in a memoir someday. We all have stories, mine is horrific, Ray admitted. I will probably never tell it. Maybe I'll write a book one day. It's just so traumatizing that women just want to live every day and feel safe. In the caption of the clip, Ray delved deeper into her experience with Diddy, praising Cassie for speaking out against him and shedding light on the reasons why some women choose to remain silent about abuse. Encouraging women to prioritize their healing above all else, Ray emphasized the importance of creating safe spaces for healing and empowerment in a world where the system often fails to deliver justice. Ladies, keeping space to heal and move on is key, Ray asserted. Gathering to incriminate is goals, but in this wild world with a broke A system, our healing is priority. Shame on all those men that let this continue. Shame on me maybe for prioritizing my mental health, some would say. But after working in a place that snatches souls, mine is intact and of the light. I saved myself. Legal expert Niyama Ramani has sounded a sobering alarm regarding Sean Diddy Combs, suggesting a grim future that could entail life behind bars amid sex trafficking allegations. Speaking exclusively to Us Weekly, Ramani painted a stark picture, likening Diddy's potential fate to that of notorious figures like Jeffrey Epstein and R. Kelly. I wouldn't be surprised if this is another Jeffrey Epstein or an R. Kelly type of sex trafficking case where we're talking about multiple victims across multiple jurisdictions over a significant period of time, Romani speculated. And again, these are just allegations. Nothing's proven yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if Diddy is arrested in the coming days or weeks and he's going to have to face these charges. Rahmani didn't mince words when it came to the potential consequences emphasizing that there's no plea bargain that could spare Diddy from a harsh sentence if convicted. There's no possible plea that is going to get him off with a slap on the wrist or probation. If the prosecutors are successful and able to prove it, he may end up dying in prison. The gravity of the situation became apparent when law enforcement agents raided Diddy's residences, sparking a wave of speculation and concern. Homeland Security's involvement confirmed the gravity of the accusations, signaling a serious federal sex trafficking investigation. Diddy, however, remains unscathed by legal repercussions thus far. Despite the severity of the allegations, his attorney, Aaron Dyer, vehemently refuted the claims, denouncing the excessive force used during the raids. According to Romani, the roots of the investigation may trace back to Diddy's tumultuous past, particularly his legal battles with ex-girlfriend Cassie. Her lawsuit alleging sexual assault and physical abuse catalyzed a chain reaction, prompting other women to come forward with similar accounts. 
I think this all started with that lawsuit. When Cassie sued Diddy, Cassie was with Diddy for a decade and she knew where the bodies were buried and she spilled it all out, Romani explained. And that encouraged other victims to come forward. As the investigation nears its culmination, Romani foresees an imminent arrest for Diddy. I don't think it's a matter of if, I think it's a matter of when Diddy will be arrested, Romani asserted. He should make sure that he has his lawyers on standby because he's likely going to face federal sex trafficking charges very soon. The recent federal raids on Sean Diddy Combs' lavish estates may have deeper roots than initially thought, potentially intertwined with the decades-old mystery surrounding rapper Tupac Shakur's tragic murder in 1996. According to Phil Carson, a former FBI agent deeply involved in investigating the killing, there could be a connection between the search warrants for Combs' properties and the recent arrest of a suspected accomplice in Shakur's murder. Carson, who spent years delving into the complexities of hip-hop culture and its criminal underbelly, sheds light on the situation in an exclusive interview with DailyMail.com. He points to the arrest of Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, an alleged associate involved in Shakur's murder, as a pivotal moment. Davis's arrest last year may have put significant pressure on him to divulge new information about Combs to authorities. It's not like the olden days of the Italian mafia where everybody kept their mouth shut. Carson explains. As soon as somebody has handcuffs on them, they'll sell out their own mom now. Davis, described as an OG, or original gangster, has likely brushed shoulders with numerous influential figures from the era, making him a potentially valuable source of information. Carson suggests that Davis, facing the prospect of a life sentence, may be inclined to cooperate with authorities and reveal previously undisclosed details. He's rubbed shoulders with a lot of the big shots, Carson remarks. Every one of those guys has a story to tell about how the streets were run back then. While Carson cautions against jumping to conclusions about the raids solely based on Davis's arrest, he highlights the significance of understanding the evidence that led to the issuance of the search warrants. The contents of the affidavits used to obtain the warrants could provide crucial insights into the motivations behind the raids. It's gotta be something of substance, Carson insists. The complex web of connections and potential motives surrounding the case becomes even more intricate with revelations from Davis himself. Under a temporary immunity deal in 2008, Davis reportedly disclosed to LAPD detectives that Combs had allegedly offered him $1 million to murder Death Row Records boss Suga Knight. So he took me downstairs and he's like, man, I want to get rid of them dudes, man recounted Davis in a recorded confession to police, as reported by LA Weekly in 2011. I was like, we'll wipe their accord out quick, man, it's nothing, Davis continued, detailing the chilling events of September 7, 1996. On that fateful night, Davis claimed his crew ambushed Suge Knight and Tupac Shakur on Las Vegas Boulevard. Davis allegedly provided a Glock pistol to his nephew Orlando Anderson, who then opened fire on Shakur's BMW, resulting in the tragic death of the iconic West Coast rapper and injuries to Knight. Despite Davis's repeated admissions, including in a memoir, it wasn't until September 29, 2023, that Vegas police arrested him for Shakur's murder, following the expiration of his immunity deal. However, while Davis's involvement in Shakur's murder remains a matter of record, there's been no explicit link between the ongoing investigation into the rapper's death and the recent raids conducted by Homeland Security, HSI agents on Sean Diddy Combs' properties. Instead, the raids reportedly stem from a separate sex trafficking investigation, casting a shadow of uncertainty over the circumstances surrounding Combs' mansions. Responding to the scrutiny, Combs' lawyer, Aaron Dyer, released a statement on Tuesday denouncing the probe as a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. These accusations include claims of sexual abuse leveled against Combs by an anonymous woman last year. The woman alleged that Combs and two associates violently raped her when she was 17 years old after intoxicating her with drugs and alcohol. In a shocking lawsuit, an anonymous woman referred to as Jane Doe dropped bombshell allegations against the 54-year-old rapper, claiming he flew her to his New York studio back in 2003 and plied her with copious amounts of drugs and alcohol. Now in her late 30s, the accuser backed up her startling claims with a photo showing herself seated on the lap of the I'll Be Missing You singer, goofing around in his Manhattan studio. She joins a chorus of voices accusing him of sexual assault, 
marking the fourth woman to do so in a lawsuit. This lawsuit came hot on the heels of a legal complaint by R&B singer Cassie Ventura, 37, who alleged that Combs subjected her to savage beatings, drug-fueled hotel orgies, and rape. Cassie settled with him the day after her lawsuit went public in November, but Combs' legal troubles didn't stop there. Just days after the settlement, two women identified as Liza Gardner and Joy Dickerson Neal filed separate lawsuits alleging they were sexually assaulted by the music mogul in the early 1990s. Then, another alleged victim stepped forward in December 2023, accusing the hip-hop mogul and his entourage of brutally gang-raping her when she was just 17 years old. The legal storm intensified in late February when Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a music producer who collaborated with Combs, filed a lawsuit claiming he was coerced into soliciting sex workers and performing sex acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs in 2022 and 2023. Jones alleged that underage girls were present at these parties, held at Combs' homes in LA, Miami, and New York, as well as on a rented yacht in the US Virgin Islands. According to his lawsuit, Combs even went as far as to threaten to eat Mr. Jones's face and drugged him before sexual encounters. In response to these allegations, Combs' attorney, Sean Hawley, vehemently denied the claims, stating, we have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Douglas Wigdor, an attorney representing Cassie and another Jane Doe accusing Combs, expressed support for law enforcement's actions following the Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, raid. In a statement to DailyMail.com, he stated, We will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. In a whirlwind of shocking revelations, Kanye West has stirred the pot with explosive claims about rap mogul P. Diddy's alleged tactics to avoid incarceration. These eyebrow-raising comments have resurfaced from a previously deleted video that has now made its way back online, setting tongues wagging. The timing couldn't be more dramatic, as news of law enforcement raiding two of music icon Diddy's residences earlier this week has sent shockwaves through the industry. These raids are said to be part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation, adding layers of intrigue to the unfolding saga. While Diddy's legal team vehemently denies any wrongdoing, dismissing the entire affair as a witch hunt, a revealing clip from a former Drink Champs interview has emerged, shedding light on Kanye's eyebrow-raising insinuations. The Mirror reports that this footage mysteriously disappeared shortly after the initial interview aired. In the controversial October 2022 interview, the renowned rapper dropped bombshell allegations, suggesting that certain high-profile figures are in cahoots with authorities to evade prison time. What's more, Kanye claimed that these individuals are resorting to blackmail to safeguard their own interests. Among those implicated in this explosive expose is Diddy, referred to by Kanye under his former stage moniker, Puff Daddy. In a candid moment, the Gold Digger rapper passionately asserted, the reason why you gotta talk is because you did a deal, you fucking fed. That's why you've gotta come at me because part of your deal to do all that and get out of jail involved a promise that you're gonna pull my card. However, the full interview was swiftly removed from circulation shortly after its airing, not only due to Kanye's contentious remarks about Jewish people, but also his commentary on the death of George Floyd, leaving audiences clamoring for more answers amid the swirling controversy. Do you think there is any way Diddy could ever escape this? Let us know in the comments. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.